Okay? Thank you. It's an honor to have the final words in this competition. I'm going to open my speech very quickly with a few points of rebuttal that aren't worked into my speech. The rest of it is worked in my points of passion. Hopefully, I'll outline that clearly. In response to CO, Martin stands up and tells us that labour laws in Ireland are a great example of how like, an economy doesn't go down the toilet when we, like, like people initially think it does. Ireland is a great example how, of how in the EU, policy, specifically economic, is not a one-size-fits-all one approach. Okay? Ireland's economy is in the toilet with the type of economic policy that, they, that the EU has forced upon it. Okay? That, that applies also to social policy. In response to Olivia telling us that we don't talk about abortion, Jamie stands up and asks you, how are you going to reconcile sanctity of life with abortion? The answer to that is, you don't want to, which is not a good thing, because at the point you tell these people, we don't want to reconcile with you, you get no discussion at all. You don't get the chance to talk to these people. You don't get the chance to change their opinions, okay? You just don't get that, that, that discussion. On to my substantive. So OG, no thank you. OG opens his speech with a definition of the EU. Okay? He states that the EU works through integration to cooperation. What we show you on our side of the house is that we don't get that integration. We don't get the ability to integrate and work with these states, and hence we don't get cooperation. Issue one in this debate, and this is the entire debate has been about this, is my one point of clash, is how we can best achieve this cooperation, how we can best like, sustain values that, that are better for everybody without causing like, uh, chasms between groups. Okay? This debate is in part about how like, this does not truly aid minorities. Nowhere through the op bench, or prop bench rather, do they prove that what they're saying is a legitimate right, okay? Nowhere do they prove that law actually works and changes points of view. Like, just because they can't, because it doesn't. Like, uh, we've had plenty of examples of how law does not equal social change, okay? What this debate isn't about, and we agree that we have a hugely marginal harm if this was about how it upsets tiny minority groups, okay? We agree with you then. But it's not just about these two groups. It's about how this affects entire countries, okay? It's about Turkey, it's about Ukraine, it's about previous USSR states, it's about Ireland, Catholic Ireland, as I talked about before. Ireland already disillusioned by the failures of the EU. It's about how this is the final nail in the coffin that can send these countries into the grave the sovereignty can often be, okay? And James QI, thank you, he asks Prop Bench, Prop Bench again, rather, uh, Prop Bench, why these people hold these views? OG Peer does not answer with religion, okay? He does not answer with the idea that sometimes these people hold legitimate views that they believe in to their core, okay, that are grounded in doctrine that they believe in equally. He doesn't answer with this, why would he, his proposition, okay? The proposition can't deny the truth. Why? Why is it bad when you marginalise these people who believe in these things, these religious type beliefs, to their very core? Like, as Jamie tells you, it marginalises these groups in the political sense. Okay? So no longer can e the EU offer these groups the political capital of joining a collective body in which their, their voice in like, a global economy, and a global society, is so much louder. They can't join the EU, they can't gather them together. It also denies them simply the right to join like, what was our core structure when we first formed, which was economics. Okay? They just can't get in. Turkey, which has the potential to be a, like, a massive economic benefit to the country, because of its largely Islamic population, just doesn't get that opportunity. Okay? Before I go on to what else it loses, I'll take opening. John Bradley. So, the opposition wants a very loose and credit union catering to the men. But we say, for reasons we named it, having a small mid union that is credible in enforcing its rights and laws means it's not economically efficient, more free, and that's a preferable status to live in. Okay. I'm going to go on and tell you why a wider common ground is better place. But one of the core principles of the EU is ever increasing union. That's what we aim to do. We you know when we call people together and then are able to have those relations relationships with them and say you're part of our group, okay, that does something to a country. It makes them want to work with these people, not only for the economic policies, if just to stay as part of this collective union. Okay, I'll go on to say more about why it's better to work around in the first place. Okay. Not only do they lose out on the trade, not only do they lose out on the potential to be part of that collective body and have a louder voice, they lose out, as Jamie tells you, on things like the ECHR, which is a very common ground, no thank you. Okay? Because like, what this does is uh, it attaches those core intrinsic rights that every human should have to things that just aren't intrinsically provable, like gay marriage. Okay? So gay people deserve the right not to be prosecuted, killed, or like, assaulted in the street. Like people want an abortion, like 
they deserve that way. And what they don't deserve is like the outright ability to say, I'm going to take this thing, gay marriage, which is quite unlike all marriage, which can often be considered an abstract human concept, um, and say we have the right to that. They have the right to a peaceful life, not necessarily this, okay? You don't prove the connection between of how like these rights, like gay marriage, uh, like specifically no debate on abortion rights, are intrinsic things. Okay, I'll go on to say more about like why those are I'm saying that. Right, so I've said, like, same sex is not an intrinsic right. There are people out there with legitimate points of view, huge swathes of people. And what's I personally like, believe in it, this should be a right. I can't just deny it. millions of religious people who have this belief to their very core, as Jamie tells you, like, with the backing of God and hell to convince them of this, that they should no thank you, sorry Martin, that they shouldn't believe in this, okay? Abortion, again, I believe it should be a right, but there's a spectrum out there for debate, okay? There's a spectrum out there for the debate of abortion rights. There are people with these beliefs and without these beliefs that believe in the sanctity of life, that believe in alternative options. At this point, once you ostracize these people, you just can't have that debate with them, okay? Which is why it's better to have this common ground and work upwards, okay? Um, like, a bit more what this does now to these countries. It pushes them further away. It pushes specifically countries in the East to powers that legitimize and, like, rationalize their views to agree with them, which makes it even harder to, like, find that common ground with them, even harder to just have that discussion, because they're no longer part of our friendship group. Actually, they're actively against us, okay? And they've been legitimized by people that they now moved on to join. Okay? What this does is, it simply establishes a far greater hill for us to climb, or for minorities to climb, when it comes to these types of debate, okay? No, no, no longer do you just have to prove that I'm a person, I don't decide, deserve to be persecuted for my rights. You also have to believe or prove that I should have access to your institution, your beliefs, everything that you are, I am allowed to define and say. That's not a right, that's not sovereignty, but like, or sovereignty can be argued to, like, or lack of sovereignty, can be argued to be a good thing. This is an extreme, like, entire removal of it, which is a far different thing, and a far more difficult battle to prove, and we don't believe opposition, opposition, again, has done so, and for that reason specifically, like, how this, it's far more easy to work from a common ground to a, like, much higher level. Um, but we're together in one single union. These are the reasons that opposition wins this debate.